take a look at The Killer. John Woo's 1989 action masterpiece now has a remake by John Woo. And it's another masterpiece. We'll go deep inside the guntastic streaming thriller. Hey, speaking of guns, we'll take a look at Gunner. It's kind of like taken, only on a camping trip. And with Luke, the oft-forgotten Hemsworth at the helm, he too has a special set of skills. Then we'll take a look at Caesar Milan's new season of his dogtastic show. And we'll take a look at the world records being set by Deadpool and Wolverine and get caught in the frenzy of Twister as it hits streaming and VOD services, ready for you to enjoy all the thrills of a natural disaster from the comfort of your own living room. That and more as we, say it with me now, take a look! It's fine. It's cool. You can say that we ain't nothing, but you know it's... Tr oh, oh, hey! I was just talking to my mom. Hey, welcome to Take a Look. Yes, we're going to talk about all kinds of movies. Let's start it off by introducing my co-host today. It's Kelly Savannah Deaton. How uh, are you? Fabulous. How are you? Good. How's your summer? Amazing, because all of these amazing movies are out. That's what I'm talking about. This is the summer of movies that don't suck. I know. And it seems like last summer I was saying, please get out there and go see movies. This summer you I'm just saying... You don't have to bet. Exactly. I'm saying thank you for getting out there and going to see movies on the big screen. And now with that said, let's talk about a movie that's streaming. <laughs> Switching gears right now, let's talk about... The Killer. Yeah, this is such an awesome movie. I love me some John Woo. Yes, and this is a... You, by the way, you said remake. It's called a reimagining, Mark. Don't correct me on my show. But you're <gasps> right. my job. <laughs> I screwed that's that up. <laughs> it's a reimagining, not a remake. But still, it's a great movie. It's written by Matthew Strickland and Josh Wait. Campbell. You don't normally bring the writers up. Why are you bringing the writers up? Because they wrote my movie, Notorious oh, Nick. Oh, shameless promotion, it's Mark. Not, I'm not promoting anything but the killer right now. You need to see this on Peacock Streaming. I sat down with two people largely making it cool. That would be? Natalie Emanuel and Omar C. Yeah, Natalie, I love her in Game of Thrones. Uh, Omar C, a French actor we know yeah. him from. Lupin on Netflix. And... Uh, Jurassic World. No, Jurassic World. And the list it's goes on. Sequel with bigger dinosaurs. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. I sat down to talk about the writing specifically for their characters. Listen. For me, it's like on say the the way it was written. It was really interesting for me when I read it. Like just that everything he 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 does not say without the without which he says something without saying it. You're so great in this because, like you said. So many of your character's motivations, he doesn't announce what he's doing or thinking, but you have to portray uh, motivation and feeling without saying. Exactly, exactly. And that was very interesting. And it's something that you could you could like already have like on 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 the script. It's 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 real written. I love the way it's it was uh, on the script, and it was a good a, a good start for me, a good inspiration. And then Natalie, your character, we very definitely know what she wants to say when she's trying to kill people. <laughs> Talk about what it's like to be in this type of John Woo movie. It's amazing. It's a dream come true, really. Um, I, I feel so just grateful and lucky to have had this opportunity and to do it with the action master like is just amazing. And, you know, the killer obviously and his original movie is so iconic. And it felt like a real responsibility to um, revisit that with John himself. Um, and I felt, I feel very lucky to have, have done that and feel grateful to have done that. Um, and I just feel really proud of this film. And I feel like the, the original is such a beautiful piece of work and I love it. And, and I think that we've done a really cool reimagining. Um, and yeah, I just, I'm excited for people to see it. Me too. And there, she even said reimagining, and I screwed it up by saying it was a remake. Wasn't going to say anything. All but... right. But I, I can't wait for you to see it. Uh, this is the movie. This is why you buy that 80 inch screen when it's on mm -hmm. sale at Costco or Walmart. Yep, the action scenes, and then you have two great leads. Ugh, count me in. And they're in Paris. Yeah. So I... uh, review the movie in French. Okay. Ce film est très magnifique et uh, très bon et très intéressant. And what did you just say? I said the movie is magnificent, uh, interesting, and very good. Uh, uh, my review is, uh, <laughs> où coupez la fromage? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't speak You're French, so I think I just cheese. said who cut the cheese. Yeah. All right, coming up on this episode of Take a Look, let's go back to the big screens. You need to see Gunner there. This is a good America action movie because there's got guns and a guy named Gunner. Yep. It's the off forgotten Hemsworth. Luke joins Aww. us next.
Well, you sure know how to make an infant. Your son sent me to get you out. How are you going to do that? Can't say I'm not intrigued. Your son took my voice. All right, there you have it. A scene from Gunner reminding that Morgan Freeman graces it. And probably the first time I've seen him behind the bars since Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, I think so. And he has a smaller role in this movie, but right. when he is on screen, you want more of him. That's yeah. how good he is. Exactly. There's enough of him to make the trailer. So yeah. that, that's all you need. <laughs> all right, so in this movie, and like I said, in the open of the show, it pretty much is taken only on a camping trip. A hundred percent. And they run into a drug deal and stuff like that. So right. minor detail. This time you've got <laughs> Luke, the offer of Cotton Hemsworth. Yeah, you know how they say the poor man's Wendy or Donnie Wahlberg is the poor man's Mark? This yeah, yeah. is like the poor man's Liam and Chris Hemsworth. Hey, Look, so every movie's got its own budget, so they made it work with this guy. I had a pleasure talking to him from his home. Take a look. I can't begin to tell you how much I love this movie. When I saw the first Taken, uh, it left me feeling a certain way that I haven't felt since until this movie. Oh, cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I mean, Taken, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's exactly what popped into my mind, I think, um, from the very beginning. I, I remember the special set of skills. I, I love this guy's tenacity. I love Gunner's ability to uh, make the most of any situation. Uh, and it's something that I think permeates through, uh, you know, a lot of the special forces military uh, in your country. They are the, the, the best of the best of the best of the best. My preparation involved hanging out with a bunch of those guys and listening to, you know, everyone's story and, and, and trying to fit little pieces in there and fit pieces in there. Each one of these guys was a... a it's, you know, a big part of Gunner. There's a great sequence inside the Metalworks, which I think, which I think people will love, um, involving, you know, man, <laughs> one stuck guy after another, being uh, punished by, by bricks and fire and all sorts of stuff. Uh, I think that's, that's one of the best ones in the, in the, in the movie. So if you were to sum it up, if you were sitting next to someone on a plane going, so why should I see this? Just finish the sentence. See this, Gunner, because... If you love the action films of old, then uh, this will take you right back into it. Amen. It's awesome, sir. I appreciate your time today, and thanks for making this. It's thanks, really great. Cheers. Cheers, Mike. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Cheers, cheers. Uh, it is awesome. And, you know, I, I goof around a lot about him being the offer gotten Hemsworth. He is a great actor. He is he perfect is. for this role. And I liked it way more than I thought it was going I to. I did, too. Honestly, I was thinking it's just going to be derivative of Taken, like you said. But sure. it's so much more than that. And you're entertained from start to finish. Yeah, you know, the plot of Taken works for a reason, and it works here, too. Uh, Dimitri brought it to you. Dimitri is a guy who, I remember the first time I talked to him, it was for the movie Kickboxer, which pretty much brought MMA to American audiences. And we talked about this. Congratulations on an awesome movie. Oh, thanks so much, Mark. That's very nice of you to say. Amazing cast. Morgan Freeman uh, owns every single pixel of every single frame that he appears in. Uh, do you have a, a moment that you're most proud of with him? In this? I think the moment when he's sitting in the, in the car and he's talking to Luke about being a father and they're both sharing fatherly moments and he's trying to connect with him, although he's a drug he dealer. Kidnapped it. Um, I think that's probably a, a really wonderful scene that they pull off together. Yeah, it's wild how this movie goes from being one of the best action movies I've ever seen to all of a sudden hitting some of the same poignant notes of Shawshank Redemption all in the same movie. Oh, wow. Now, th those are those are uh, high praises. I very much appreciate it. And I know this isn't a dog and pony show, but at the same time, we got to get butts in seats. So finish this sentence. Be gunner because... See, Gunner, because you're never going to have more fun in your entire life than when you get to watch Gunner. Enjoy. On a big screen. Amen. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. Thanks so much. It does have big explosions, big action, big guns, and a guy named Gunner. And Hemsworth, a Hemsworth brother. Can't yeah. go wrong. Yeah, there you go. All right, so uh, switching from the violent to the way less violent, the cute and cuddly, let's go on to Caesar Milan's new show. Uh, and that is season five of, you know, this show, Better Human, Better Dog. We're going to talk about it and why he doesn't like to fly next. Hey, welcome back to Take a Look. We always talk about how we celebrate things on screens of all sizes, big and small, but often because I love movies, that's all I talk about. Well, not today. Yep. I, uh, I'm going to switch gears and talk about something cute and cuddly. Uh, are you a fan of Susan Milan? I am. I've been watching some of his shows since he's been on the air 20 years. This no year, kidding. Since 2004, his initial 
Dog Whisper, yeah, the one exactly. and only. Seems like it was yesterday. He's already on season five of this new show. I caught up with him at his home to talk about it. Take a look. Hey, sir, thanks for joining us on Take a Look. I was thinking about you during commercial break in that anybody that I see out and about with their dogs instantly, people are a magnet to them. They walk up, they want to talk to them about their dogs. You, however, you can't go anywhere even without a dog, without people coming up to you going, hey, can I tell you about my dog? Can you travel about? Can you go anywhere without that happening? You know, when, when I'm in the on the planes, because, you know, I travel a lot, this, you're right. The, once the pilot know I'm there, he comes out, out of the cabin to talk to me about their dog problem. Every <laughs> single time. There is no one <laughs> flight that a, that a pilot does not come out and ask me about, about their dogs. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I don't want to get personal, but I hope for you, you're in first class so the pilot doesn't have to walk <laughs> All right, sir, here you go. Season five, as you look back to all the seasons, what is the episode that you will remember from now on for the rest of your life? And then tell me something that's happened this season that stuck with you. Well, you know, I, 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 I remember um, uh, a dog named Gavin that came from Iraq a long time ago. So it was a very dear and show for me because I, I got to rehabilitate a dog with post-traumatic stress. But in this new episode, it's, it's, a, it's a dog named Brunello that was born and raised in Italy, and he came to America, uh, an immigrant like me, and, and, uh, but he came with uh, neurological problems, and he was blind and deaf and developed aggression towards objects. So imagine to rehabilitate a dog that has a little a wire disconnected and, uh, and is also blind and deaf, but is super aggressive for six years. So imagine, all that is, is an add-on to the behavior, right? So when a dog is, is not blind or deaf, you can influence it. When a dog is not, doesn't have a neurological problem, you can influence them very, very fast. But when a dog has all of these obstacles, that was, that was actually a miracle. That was a magical thing. Like, that's why in the, in the episode I cried because I, I couldn't, I, I, I just, if, we, if it wasn't without God, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, you know? It was just magical. Magical indeed. Such a good guy, Susan Milan. Season five now. Better human, better dog now on ABC. I forgot to ask you, but like, when the pilots come out of the cockpit to ask him about his dog, who's flying the plane? I know, I was thinking when that's that happening? too. It's like snakes on a plane, dogs on a plane kind of vibe. That's what I got from that. There you go. All right, from uh, cute and cuddly to uh, warm and fuzzy, there is just an absolute gut bomb of an emotion that's going to come at you when you see this movie, Daughters. Did you cry? I did. Even watching the trailer, you cry. How can you not? Oh, it, it, it's it so is moving so and... a moving. And it started with a TED talk that spun into, uh, you know, this brought to life on the big screen. I'm getting choked up just talking about it. I caught up with three people without whom it wouldn't be possible. Take a look. I took away so much from it. I can't wait for people to see it. Natalie, Angela, talk about the dawn of this. How did it begin? Well, uh, Girls for Change started long before I uh, started the film, but Angela's TED Talk, her words just about the wisdom of these girls knowing what they needed and bringing that to um, their fathers in an event that could be incredibly healing and profound through dance and touch and play and celebration um, was the, one of the most powerful things I'd, I'd heard. So I contacted Angela and you know asked if she would, felt like making this into a documentary. Angela, the TED Talk, talk about that. Did you, in your wildest dreams, think that it would end result to this? No, I did not. When As soon as I got off the stage um, from the TED Talk, people asked me, where was my book? <laughs> they didn't ask me where was the film. <laughs> and right. but when, I re when I returned home, I had a lot of emails asking <laughs> if I would be interested in um, doing a film, oh, a feature film, a narrative film, you know, Broadway plays. Everybody saw something um, that was, you know, not in my wildest dreams. And I actually declined them all. The reason I decided to have the conversation with Natalie is because she was the only one who emailed me and centered the girls and not the jail. And she met a lot of my team and saw other fathers that had participated in the dance before. So I was attracted to her tenacity and commitment. Uh, and commitment shows through and through. <laughs> and like I said, everybody will take away something from this Absolutely. and be enlightened. Chad. The yes. power to your right and left right now. <laughs> Talk about being part of this synergy. Natalie helped make the process so seamless for it to be captured. That it was never a situation where things were scripted. It was always just this organic process like with that. a new like group of girls, a new group thing, of families man. that we had been living. So the the visionary um, eyesight and the, 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 the direction that Natalie took in her approach to come in and not interrupt 
but to just help curate the story by letting the girls tell it. And Angela's uh, willingness to never tell these girls no, it inspires me because that's bo those are both high character traits and, and have allowed something that's so dynamic to be shared with the world. Dynamic is an understatement. See mm -hmm. daughters as soon as you can. I would be shocked if this doesn't win Academy Awards. It has to. And it already has taken home the 2024 Sundance Audience Award, which is highly coveted. So yeah. that right there should tell you. The ball is rolling. Yeah, the ball is exactly. rolling. Exactly. Check out Doll. Again, I get choked up I talking about it. It's actually heart wrenching. I have a daughter, and whether you've been in or out of the prison system or know somebody that has or just have a difficult relationship with someone in your family, you're going to find something in this you're going to relate to. Mm -hmm. I know you. I can empathize. It's a little bit different, but my father passed away when I was three. Yeah. So, you know, there's always those dances that you don't have your dad at and all those other things. So, like I said, it's not the same situation, but you can empathize on some level for right. sure. So, see that movie and leave it to me to really bring the party down I know, by Mark. digging deep. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, my friend. Cleanse coming up next. Let's talk about happy stuff, like stuff that's crushing it at the box office. Uh, yeah, Twisters. Finally, you can enjoy this natural disaster in the comfort of your own home as it hits streaming and VOD and Deadpool continues to break box office records. We'll dig in deep to that next. Hey, welcome back to Take a Look. This is my favorite part of the show because I get to talk about movies that truly are my favorite of the summer. What a summer it has been. Starting off with Deadpool and Wolverine. Yes, Ryan Reynolds. Mm -hmm. Ryan Reynolds. Uh -huh. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, for you, it's just a chance to talk about your, your other boyfriend, Ryan Reynolds, and the Hugh Jackman. Uh, oh, so you know, we've aired so much content about this that I had exhausted everything. I thought, I've got no more interviews. I've got nothing. And then a friend of mine, John Clay, who I remember shot the footage of me on the red carpet for X-Men Origins, right? The one from like 10, 15 years ago? No yeah, way! Yeah, exactly. He said, you realize you actually had both of them on the carpet. And I said, that's insane. Why are you just telling me now? That's amazing. And he said, because you thought it would be funny to buy plastic Wolverine hands and <laughs> take the microphone to it. And he said, it looks so stupid. I didn't want to embarrass you. That's so, what friends are for. Well, embarrass me as it were. We're going to air it. And uh, the creepy thing, <laughs> not creepy, but what's <laughs> wild about it um, is that random people showed up on the red carpet. Such like as? Alice Cooper, a legendary rock what? star. Take a look. That's amazing. Alice Cooper, break out a sample. School's out for summer. I knew that one. Moments ago, I saw you meet Alice Cooper, who's still standing just feet away from yeah. you. You looked a little geeked out by it. I was a little geeked out by it. It's Alice Cooper. Oh, okay. I wasn't expecting to meet him here, you know? <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> random. Hugh Jackman, no problem. You expect a lot of people, but not Alice Cooper. Cool, yeah. I'm starting to dig these, and I'm wondering, <laughs> were you ever tempted to take wardrobe home, spice things up in the bedroom a little bit? Yeah, no, that's not really my wife's thing. Me on the other, no. Okay. <laughs> but you said, you said he might want to borrow these to spice things up in the bedroom. What are your thoughts to that? Um, I'm, I'm concerned. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm a little concerned. Just, I, I love this. I'm just looking at this. You went to a lot of trouble for this. But if you're not Hugh Jackman, you can't really rock it, can you? <laughs> that's right. Okay, you got to have, well, you got to have the veins coming out of your arms right, right here. You know, that's good. How you doing? Hey, man. How you doing? Good to see you again. How are you? Don't tell Joe Carnahan you saw me like this. Uh, if, if Hugh were, was rocking those, and that's, that's the independent movie version. You, you're showing your theatrical side, and I like it. All right. Love did you actually you. buy these? I did. I stole them from my son, actually. <laughs> hey, I can tell you. I accidentally took them from set. Yeah. Not accidentally. In my bag and got on a plane and almost got strip search going through customs, let me tell you. So I'm like, what's with the knives in the bag? I'm like, well, I don't know. What knives? There's six knives in your bag. Anyway, it was Full body cavity just for these. Good to see you, you, man. All right, all right. So if nothing else, me wearing the stupid plastic fingers got Hugh Jackman to admit he tried to carry the movie props through customs or airplane security. That was intriguing. But, Mark, next time a friend of yours says, oh, I have stuff that, you know, and you look like that with Footage it, that might embarrass you? Yeah, just trust your friends. Trust just your say friend. no. All say right. no. All right, John. Sorry I didn't trust you. All right, let's talk about this now. Headed to video on demand and streaming services. Finally, you can take twisters from the big screen to your small screens. Or if you took my advice and bought that 80 inch on sale, then that way. Yeah. What's great about this in any format? Two words Glenn, pal. Yeah, and I talked to the trio <laughs> about it. Take a look. Nice to see you guys. Hey, nice to see nice you. To see nice you. to see you. We got a group, so let's start with a group response. If you feel it, chase, chase it. it. That's what I'm talking about. 
Thank you for committing to this movie. Thank you for chasing your parts in this movie. Shot on film, so you can't do a lot of takes. Nope. So not that any actor in the right mind would ever want to yell cut, but name one moment on the set you wish you could yell cut. <laughs> The final sequence in the movie, the movie yeah, being yeah, yeah. I mean, there were a couple moments, I mean, just being pelted with rain and just like, your eyes are red and you, <laughs> you, you barely can speak correctly because you're just getting blasted with wind and rain over and over. You're soaked all day long for like 14, 15 hours. Yeah, there were a few moments that day where I wanted to call cut, and mm -hmm. that's a wrap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's what that's also where your castmates come in, come in handy, where you're all sort of in the same elements together. You know, after those insane scenes where you're just getting blasted <laughs> with stuff, usually, even though they're really intense scenes, usually we were laughing right afterwards mm -hmm. because it's yeah. so ridiculous. Just because <laughs> it's an entire. If you if you look at, we're obviously you're looking at us. The camera's looking at us, and it lo you know looks like we're in the middle of a storm. What we're looking at is an entire crew of people shooting things at you. And they always look really <laughs> gleeful. Like they're always like, like they look like really excited, excited yeah. to be yeah. throwing like debris, ice yeah. and... They come with anger uh, yeah. on set, just ready to hit you with hail. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm looking at Glenn Powell over there on the monitor. I think I just realized I got a bit of a man crush finally, on that guy. Finally, finally, and you know who else actually put their stamp of approval in a huge yeah. way on this movie is none other than Hollywood A-lister Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. He went to the premiere. Yes, Glenn Powell sent the invite, and Tom Cruise actually showed up, and the whole time was like, "I love it, I love it." To yeah, all the yeah I mean, he did him uh, dirty by putting him in Top Gun in a prominent role. He's the heir apparent to that throne. Yep. All right, hey, thanks for hanging out on Take a Look. Where do we stalk you on social media? Kelly Savannah. There you go. I'm at TV Marquez Allen. Have yourself a great one. We'll see you next week.